afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. And, well, as you might have guessed from the title of the video, I've got a nice little motorhome we're going to review today. A very popular little motorhome, and that is a class, well, the, the manufacturer actually officially calls this a class B+. Plus. Well, I'm actually one of the few that I've seen that do that. I still call them a class C. You can call it whatever you want. But this is a 2015 Thor Citation 24SA, and this is a little mini Class B Plus Class C. 24 and a half feet long, a little diesel powered, great on fuel. Just turned 30,000 miles, Mercedes Benz diesel, all the latest technology, or well, at least latest technology you could get in a 2015 model, that is. And a really nice one, guys. Uh, 24 and a half feet long with a slide. It does have a nice power awning. I've got deployed right now. I've got the LED light bar. Uh, got the generator running. Got a 3.6 LP generator uh, by Onan with 130 or 40 hours on it. Hardly any hours at all. And uh, got some of the outside bays open. Actually, for a small motorhome, it's actually got surprisingly large amount of storage space. Now, guys, it is a used 2015, so you've got a couple little scratches on it. Most noticeable one so far that I've seen is this one right here. And I'm just showing you that, so there is no surprises when you get here. Got the slam style latches, got some outside plug-ins. Tires still got the tabs on them, they look great. Onan Cummins. Propane 3.6, which is the standard generator size for a diesel motor home. Now they do offer these with a diesel, a small diesel generator, but it's a very, very, very expensive motor home and for as much as are a very expensive upgrade when you buy them new. And most dealers don't cut, don't order them in stock like that. They order them with a 3.6. Cause these little small motor homes, most people don't run the generator much anyway. So, uh, I mean, it's several thousand dollars extra to get the diesel generator. So for most people, it's simply not worth it. And uh, be honest with you, I, you know, there's pros and cons. Yes, I know it's harder to get propane than it is to get diesel. But what I like about a propane generator is you can let that generator set. I mean, you can let that generator set for 10 years with the fuel that's in it. And that generator will fire right up and run like it was just cranked the day before. They don't gum up. They don't have carburetors that gum up. Propane's very clean burning fuel. It's not like a diesel or a gasoline powered uh, generator. That thing can set. That's why so many home standby generators are natural gas or propane simply because they can set for years at a time between cranking them up and they run absolutely fine. So uh, that's the one benefit to propane generator. And I think they're a little bit quiet. They're a lot, actually they're a lot quieter than a diesel generator is in one of these two. So uh, got outside storage bay right there. That little panel right there is plumbing access. If, hopefully you never have to get in there, but in case you ever did for a plumbing leak, it's easy access to some of your shower uh, or bath or some of your plumbing. Couple little cracks in the stripe, but again, guys, I'm not saying this thing's brand new. I mean, brand new, these things are, um, you know, they're $150,000, $170,000, and then a waiting period to get them. Got the TPO roof system, does have a 5,000 pound tow capacity. The motor is a three liter Mercedes Benz V6 diesel, turbo diesel motor, 188 horsepower, 325 pound feet of torque which doesn't really sound like that much, but will greatly surprise you going down the road. This little dude will fly, and we'll drive it later in the video. I may have to drive it and hold the camera myself because it is Saturday. I don't really have anybody freed up to do a test drive, but this is one of the few motor homes that I can drive one hand and film with the other and still do it comfortably. Got your wet bay right here in the back corner for your sewer and water hookup. Stinky, stinky, slinky storage if you want to put it right there. Uh, this is just storage bay right there. 30 amp electrical service, six gallon DSI water heater. 
got the frameless windows you do have the slide topper that water dripping off of it is condensation from the ac let me close this right here <laughs> there we go a little awkward sometimes to close that when the slide outs out you know very aerodynamic you know most people and I, and again, guys, when I when I talk about fuel mileage in an RV, there is no official test for fuel mileage. So you you've got to take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm going by information from reviews online and from different forums, and basically these are just people's opinions that own them or claim that they own them. There's even no way to verify that. Most people are claiming 65 miles an hour. They're getting. 16 17 18 miles per gallon and i know that's going to vary a lot depending on the wind if you're on flat land going uphill downhill if you're towing something etc and most people don't don't disclose all the variables to where they come up with that fuel mileage from so i'm going to say 15 miles per gallon and that's probably on the low side I don't want to give you wrong information, but do your own research of that, draw your own opinion. And of course, it's also going to be dependent on your individual driving style. Because uh, some people have a lead foot, some people don't. Some people drive faster than others. I think all RVs are designed to be driven or towed around 65 miles an hour or 70 miles an hour tops. You know, I think if you drive one or tow one faster than that, you risk flexing it, bending it, breaking seals. <coughs> potentially damaging your rv but i know most people do drive them faster than that so you know but then again it's their rv it's their money it's their chances it you know it's their money to risk so anyway i'm gonna pause the video for a minute i'm gonna pop the drone back up let's do a roof shot show you the tpo roof system roof looks excellent for a 2015 model but hang tight i'll be right back before we go inside And you can see guys that roof looks great it's clean uh doesn't look cracked or anything like that uh, of course you know this being a mercedes-benz it does have the dually rear end it does have the four-wheel abs it does have the anti-roll technology the multiple airbags in the front cab i think this thing's got eight airbags just in the driver's and passenger seat area alone um it's got a lot of technology on it you know pretty much top of the line for 15. And probably the only motorhome you could get a lot of those techno technological features on. And I apologize about the generator hours, guys. 165.5 hours, which is nothing. It's about like 30,000 miles, guys. Uh, the Mercedes-Benz designed the Sprinter chassis and motor to provide, on average, a half a million mile service life. A practical service life. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure you're going to have repairs and maintenance and all that stuff along the way to that 500,000 miles before it becomes impractical. <coughs> and that's just average. <coughs> I mean, you may get more, you may get less. But 30,000 miles, you're not going to wear this machine out in any shape, form, or fashion anywhere close to any time soon. But the main thing you will look at on a Mercedes-Benz buying one to use is to make sure there's no check engine lights. And there's not. Uh, 30,318 miles. We just drove a 600 miles here. Backup camera works great. The dash air is ice cold. Uh, both seats do swivel for party seating. <coughs> Excuse me for a second, guys. Let me uh, grab me a sip of water. Between this front air and this rear air, it's uh, giving me the coughs. Hang on one second. Sorry about that, guys. I had to turn the airs down a little bit. It was blowing so much air in me, it was uh, making me cough, drying my throat out. Anyway, what I was getting at, the airs are ice cold, obviously. <laughs> dash air looks great. Uh, or, I mean, dash air works great. Backup camera works great. Uh, dash, windshield, all that stuff is in excellent condition. Front seats do swivel. Does have the five speed Mercedes Benz Shiftronic transmission. 
So this is definitely for the size, the most fuel efficient motorhome you can get. And it's going to get the same fuel mileage as most of your class B vans with double the space interior space. And uh, whether you call it a class B plus or a class C, it doesn't matter. It's still a 24 and a half foot motorhome that gets 15 to 18 miles a gallon, let's say. Depending on your driving ability. You do have a cab over bed and this is a small bed like a Oh, excuse me, darn. You do have a uh, ladder. I like the fact that this folds up and down so it gets, makes it get in and out of the cab easier. And one thing I do love about a Mercedes Benz is incredible leg room when you're driving, which you'll see that when we test drive it. And the fact you can twist in and out of the driver's seat to the, go to the back, you don't have that hump in the floor like you do with a Ford or a GM or something like that. <coughs> Anyway, <laughs> nice opening area in here. There's no smoker pet odors. Uh, TVs, which do work, I just didn't put them on. I'm sorry about that. I'm just being lazy, I guess. You got a little pop-up skylight if you want to use it for ventilation or just to let natural light in here. You do have a full-size bed in the back corner already made up. Drawers are kind of opening up a little bit because I'm on a slant where I got it parked. And I mean, they'll stay shut for a little while, but they'll open back up here shortly. Single basin sink, solid surface countertops, uh, double burner stove top, good solid wood cabinets you can see, good amount of storage. No flaking furniture, we've already had that recovered. Uh, the only thing we had to have recovered was a dinette cushion, so all that's done. Books, manuals, everything's included with it. Nice hot clearance. And you can see the solid wood uh, uh, fascia around the slide out. Pretty good little bit of storage right here. Cabinets look good. You know, everything in here is pretty original except for the, the upholstery, the dinette cushion upholstery. Refrigerator's clean. Doesn't look like it's been used much. You can see the racks aren't scratched up or anything like that. This is a six cubic foot RV refrigerator freezer. Um, that has, uh, that will run off propane or electric, it does have LED lights. So if you're boondock camping, it will not run your battery down as fast or they won't, and they, and they don't throw out much heat. And another benefit of the LEDs is you don't have to change them out all the time. Another television right here as well, uh, for when you're laying in bed. And this is the full size bed, not a queen bed. So please keep that in mind. So it's gonna sleep two adults tightly. Um, You've got your table booth that makes a bed and your cab over bed. I'm gonna call this a five to six sleeper. Closet right here, we're hanging up stuff, keep it wrinkle free. Rear corner bathroom. Now keep in mind guys, these are a little bit more narrower than your standard RV too. So that's why they got a little bit smaller bed in it to give you a little bit bigger bathroom. Um, as far as changing space in your bathroom because this is still a small motor home You got a stand-up shower that air feels really good in here um, With a skylight Obviously, it's not been stored outside much because the shower is still good and wide uh, If one's been stored outside a lot and that skylight has had sunlight coming through it It's going to bleach the plastic surround around the shower a bright yellow or, uh, or dark yellow I mean so it's pretty obvious when one's been stored outside just from the sh condition of the shower surround wall. And that one right here is good and bright white. So we know we're good there. Vent fan. Not bad. Got your carbon monoxide and everything right there where it should be, right there by where you sleep. Got a Bluetooth stereo, DVD player built in. Lots of windows in here. So even though this is a small under 25 foot motorhome, you feel like you're in a bigger motorhome because of all the windows and of course the slide out. And I'll bring the slide out in shortly. Uh, this table is removable. So if you want to use this for a sofa instead of a table, you can. Now you do require this tabletop to make this a sleeper sofa. Now there are drawers that come out underneath the dinette uh, seats. 
for additional storage. Storage underneath that bed. Of course, part of that storage also goes to the outside too. So, you know, all in all, considering the size motor home, it's got a pretty, pretty impressive amount of storage. All in all. I mean, they didn't waste any space. You don't have any open corners. You don't have any, uh, you know, every little corner, every little speck of space they can put in here is, is well designed. So, um, good job, Thor, on that. I mean, the, the floor plan for the space that you have, considering you're only 24 and a half feet long, and that's including bumper to bumper, the cab and the rear bumper and all that, that's pretty good because the actual inside of the motorhome is smaller than that. But, and let's talk about price for a minute, guys. Now, that price is $69.9. NADA, and I'm going to pause the video for a minute again, and uh, let me flash that NADA up, because I've actually got this thing just barely above low retail with 30,000 miles. Hang on one second. So you can see, guys, I, I've got the best price out there, and if you don't believe me, get on RV Trader. I use my price checker tool which I recommend people do do two things. Always check your NADA, of course. Base retail, of course, there's no adjusting for the miles on a diesel. Uh, but, you know, you see $84,000 is retail. Then get on RV Trader and see what people are selling them for. And there's only, out of 200 something thousand used and new units on RV Trader, there's only one other 2015 Thor Citation 24SA. And it's in Kansas, and it's a dealer, so you know that that price you see advertised, you're not gonna you're not gonna walk in there with a check and buy it for that price. You know they're gonna add fees, they're gonna add upsells. You might as well add ten, twelve thousand dollars to that price before you leave with it, not even including your sales tax. But it's seventy nine nine, and there's no mention of the miles. Now that's pure laziness on whoever does their marketing at that dealer in Kansas because. I looked at the pictures. The motorhome's filthy, first of all. It's a dealer, guys. Be professional. If you're if you're a dealer watching this, and you advertise for dealership, get your guys to clean your units up. When you go take pictures, crank your motor up, crank your generator up, turn your lights on, make it look like you want to sell it. I mean, take a little pride in your work. List the miles. Three things. You should always list in an RV listing is the price, the miles, and the condition. I mean, it's not rocket science, guys. For those of you who advertise for dealerships, I mean, for sale by owners, do a lot better than than what most of you guys do on uh, that that post stuff for other dealers' uh, websites. I mean, come on, have a little pride, professional pride. But uh, of course, no miles listed. Mine's got thirty thousand miles. It's ten thousand dollars less and includes our major systems inspection. Unlike other dealerships, our price is plus tax out the door. I don't have any upsells, I don't have any fees. I'm not gonna add, I'm not gonna try to sell you a extended warranty gap insurance, tire and wheel protection packages. I'm not gonna try to see all that junk. That adds eight, 10, 12, $15,000 to the advertised price. I'm not gonna add you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars or more in dock fees, print fees, and all that other junk that other dealers charge that is nothing but pure dealer profit and just a way to rip you off to get you to pay more for the RV by disguising the profit in the form of these bogus fees, happy camper fees, uh, inspection fees, destination fees, etc. The only thing I charge is applicable sales tax. And if you are a Georgia resident, there is a 50 to $100 highway impact fee and a 40 to 50 dollar tag and title fee that's because the state says i have to charge that to georgia residents only out of state residents you don't pay that and then of course applicable sales tax that's it easy simple and done take it to the bank i don't care how you pay for it other dealers charge you more if you pay for it yourself or you go to your own bank to get the money like a loan they charge you more for it we don't we don't care we don't make money on financing we don't overcharge you for financing like other dealers do other dealers have a deal worked out with their lenders where they can mark the rates up over what the bank approved you for. They can overcharge you for financing by thousands of dollars. That's thousands of dollars that you're adding to the overall cost of ownership. When you buy an RV from those dealerships, thousands of dollars in interest you're, you're overpaying for 
you don't pay that here guys you pay whatever the bank approves you for i got i'm not gonna lie interest rates have gone up on rvs like they have on everything else i've got no control over that we have no control over that as a dealership i don't that's at the banks okay and and i have no control over what they do you know we sell the rvs we don't loan the money that's what the banks do that's how they make their living and i wish that everybody coming here could get a zero percent rate but that's the banks don't make any money when you do that so i'm, I'm sorry and, and and i have no control over that so but rates are still now when i was in sales they used to be a lot higher i won't lie to you when i was in sales the, they were two or three percent higher on average and people paid them back then thought it was a good deal so i don't really think i still think they're still low compared to what they used to be when i was in sales many years ago and gosh i remember when i was a kid god y'all remember i don't know if, if many of y'all remember this i remember when i was a kid and uh and i remember my parents griping about a car loan in the, in the late 80s being in, in with prime credit being 17 18 19 percent interest rate in the late 80s on car financing it was just ridiculous but, but house loan rates are up too i mean uh it's ridiculous what uh, house interest rates are bringing right now they're bringing five five and a half percent i mean it, it's just stupid but uh you know feds keep raising the rates up so that makes everything go up but anyway i'm not gonna get into that <laughs> that's one thing i try to keep off my channel is politics so um this unit is 69.9 lowest price on rv trader for 2015 24 sa by not just now i'm not talking about just a few hundred dollars i'm talking about ten thousand dollars not to mention probably an additional ten thousand dollars that we save you in fees and upsells that we don't charge that other dealers do so we're saving you money coming and going if you finance through one of our lenders we save you tons of money on that if you need delivery service guys it's a dollar a mile round trip so matter of fact i've got one of these going to washington state um that we sold the mercedes-benz c-class just like this or b plus whatever you want to call it and it's going 2500 miles to washington in fact we're leaving uh drivers heading out early next week taking it to washington state that's shows you how good our price is it was the same price as this one actually and i actually think it was a year older or two older but that shows you what kind of prices we have. People are willing to buy these things and have it shipped that far, pay to have it shipped that far, sight unseen because our prices are so low. And believe me, guys, there's plenty of these out here for sale, but not any for our price. With the miles and the condition, I mean, this is nice, guys. There's no bad odors in it. We're gonna drive it later in the video so you can see what, what how it drives. We're going to... Uh, bring the slide out here in a minute so you can see what it looks like with the slide out in but anyway 69.9 uh this is what we inspect we do our major systems inspection which is way more than most dealers do for used rvs and we, we make sure the major stuff works that could ruin your trip if they didn't work at time of sale and we make sure the slide out works make sure the generator runs and puts out like it's supposed to which it obviously does because i got the ac running and all that uh we make sure refrigerator freezer gets to operating temp make sure your roof air gets to operating temperature we check your plumbing system or i don't but rv techs do we check your plumbing system uh water heater water pump make sure all your faucet spigots toilet all that stuff works make sure there's no plumbing leaks and of course you know if any of these things that we check doesn't work we fix it at no additional charge to you we make sure the step works make sure the drivability is good um and we leave anything else to you to fix now what i do in my videos is i take it one step further is uh i make sure the awning works i check all the lights uh they work so you know that because we don't cover awnings in our checkout if they work they work they don't they don't this one works i've got it out and i'll put it back in before we drive it you know if it's not broke you can't fix it right so all the lights work i've checked all the cabinets they're all good um you know anything else is up to you to fix if it doesn't work we just cover the major stuff we leave the mickey mouse minor stuff to you so does everything so do we does that mean we check everything on the unit 
For some reason, people think we do, but we don't. That's what we check, guys, the major systems. We leave the minor systems to you. If they work, they work. They don't, they don't. They're sold that way. Like that scratch I showed you on the outside, it's going to be sold with that scratch. We don't cover cosmetics. We don't cover minor repairs. But this is how we keep our prices down. Now, if you want to pay me $84,000, what the retail value is on this RV, uh, we will be happy to give you a full retail RV inspection. And if it's worth that much more to you, uh, if you to pay $14,000 plus more dollars for it, then we will be happy to do that for $14,000, even though that will... <laughs> You can rebuild this motor home for a lot less than that from front to back almost. But uh, even though we couldn't spend even the tiniest fraction of that, uh, making sure everything works on it. But um, hey, if that makes you happy, you want to pay the retail price for it, we'll give you a retail inspection. But for $69.9, that includes our major systems inspection. And um, and if you want to know, if you need to, something clarified about that, just call and talk to one of my salespeople, 706-965-7929. We, we even have a form we'll send you to sign that puts everything in English for you so that you know exactly what we inspect for the price that you pay and repair if needed. And all that's included for that 69.9 price. And remember guys, no fees, no upsells, 69.9 plus applicable sales tax and again guys Georgia residents highway impact fee we do have to charge highway impact fee and tag and title fee for Georgia residents only so what I'm going to do guys and again guys if you got any questions about that give us a call we do take trade-ins and again we do have delivery service it's a dollar a mile round trip if you do have a trade-in coming back uh, where it's you know if we're coming to pick your trade-in up it, it may be slightly higher than that it just depends on your trade, the condition, um, what it is, things like that. So it's just kind of a case by case basis when there's a trade in coming back. You know, obviously, if you're trading this, if you're trading in, like, say, a travel trailer and you live a thousand miles away and you're trading in a travel trailer on this motor home, well, I've got to send two drivers one to drive this and one to drive a truck to pick you to pick the driver up and to tow your camper back so obviously that's going to be more than a dollar a mile round trip so it just again varies if you have a trade-in coming back what we charge depending on your individual situation but whatever it cost us is what we charge you we don't make money on delivery guys so it's going to be very very fair and i promise you it would be less by the time you take off work and miss that money you make being off of work it's going to be less than it would cost you to um to come get it yourself but we do actually prefer that you at least come look at it yourself if possible that's what i tell people we check the major systems we, we leave the minor systems to you uh we do recommend that you and i and i personally recommend this as well that you either come look at the unit yourself come test drive it inspect the unit for yourself if you're not comfortable doing that I highly, highly recommend any RV purchase you hire a third-party inspection service. You're thinking, Big Bo, I've never heard a dealer say that. Because dealers hate those guys. I have nothing to hide. Or you work, any RV you buy, you're going to work on. It doesn't matter if you buy, you buy new, used. doesn't matter if you spent $5 million on it or $5,000 on it. You're going to work on it. doesn't matter the brain, the, the name brand, how it's built, how it's been taken care of. You buy a new or used RV, you're going to work on it. Period. Anybody tells you any different, they're lying to you. That's just part of RV ownership. They're, they're a lot of fun, guys. I, I've got some of the best memories of my life RVing. And I will continue to make those memories, but I also know that there's some behind the scenes repairs upgrades and maintenance that i have to go through to get to those camp spots to make those memories and that's and you know after 25 years in this business and and over 25 years as an rv owner myself i've learned to expect that and to know that i know that not every time i jump in my motor home then i crank it up and take it somewhere i know that every time i do that not everything's going to work like it did the last time i took it beforehand I know that. I expect that. 
I mean, I keep a little notebook in it to write down stuff that I need to repair as I, as I find the stuff that goes wrong as I'm using it. And I don't get mad. I don't get disappointed. I'm just used to it, guys. That's part of owning an RV. Uh, fortunately, I can do a lot of the stuff myself. Um, and I've got, uh, well, I don't, you know, I actually got places I can take it to to get it fixed. And it's kind of funny. And people don't believe me when I tell them this, but, and I've got some great guys here. I've got some great RV techs, but, and, and, and for those of you who watch my videos that work at RV dealerships, you can really, and own RVs yourselves, you can relate to this too. When you actually work at the RV dealership, your stuff gets pushed to the back burner. <laughs> I mean, literally, what somebody could come in and get worked on in a few days, mine will sit for weeks for the same repair why everybody else gets work on so i actually have places i actually take mine to somebody else for that very reason not that my guys can't do it they can do it just as well as anybody else can and it actually costs me more money to do that because i can get it fixed here for less but it's funny but uh people think that oh you work at an rv dealership you're so lucky you you can get stuff done to your rv uh, you know so much easier no it's actually the opposite it's a curse sometimes <laughs> and i just laugh at it but but that is true guys and that's true Any, anybody that works in an rv dealership that owns an rv you, you all go through the same thing uh, your stuff just you know oh he works here uh he ain't going to go nowhere else just put it to the side uh, every service manager says that when it comes to uh working on an employee's rv put it to the side so uh that's why most of the time I usually do it myself or uh, I got a, a repair place that I use, independent shop that I use for stuff that I, I, I don't have time to or can't do myself. So, <laughs> But that's always funny. People get a kick when I tell them that, but it's 100% the truth. <laughs> and of course, I'm lucky too. My brother-in-law is an RV tech, so he, he does side work as well. So that, that kind of comes in handy as well. Um, but anyway, hang on tight guys. I'm gonna bring this room in and uh, put this awning up and show you what it looks like, do a quick video, then we'll take it for a test drive. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, everybody, pretty simple. Of course, I went outside and put my awning up. And as always, before I bring a room in, I go outside and make sure all the outside bays are closed, latched, and locked. And the reason I say that, especially on some of these bays, that swing out um, or up is you don't you don't want them that maybe open underneath the slide out to get hung up under the lip of the slide out when you bring it in and bend your cargo bay door that's happened to us out here before more than once luckily knock on wood i haven't done it but i can see where it'd be real easy to do that so you always double check that before i bring a room in which you should anyway and of course go ahead and lock them and all that before you take it for a drive and of course, if you were parked under a bunch of trees and you didn't have a slide topper, um, you want to make sure you don't have any limbs or debris, leaves, or anything like that that's going to slide in and damage your seal. This one does have a slide topper, so you don't have to worry about that step. But if yours doesn't, you know, a broom, uh, climb up a ladder or climb up the ladder on the back, get on the roof and sweep it off with a broom or a battery-powered leaf blower is an excellent tool for that as well. And of course, you come inside, uh, you don't have to have the parking brake on or anything like that on this particular one. Just turn your motor off and Your slide out switch is right over here on the control panel right here. Just bring it all the way in Till it stops and good and snug And you're good to go as with any slide out Bring them all the way in or all the way out. There is no in between And you can see guys besides just making it a little bit more cramped up here you can still put your bed down overhead if you want to. You can still make your sofa bed out, I mean your table booth bed out. You can still get your refrigerator. You can still cook something in the kitchen, open your refrigerator, you can still get your bathroom, get your back bed. You really don't lose access to anything uh, except it makes it, you just can't open these uh, dinette drawers up as much as you could when it's open. Other than that, guys, pretty good design. You don't really lose anything else, full access to the bathroom. Uh, 
again full access to the bedroom so all that's good so what i'm gonna do guys i'm gonna pause the video for a minute jump behind the driver's seat and let's take this thing for a test drive down the road see what it does i'm gonna hold it myself uh all my sales people it's saturday they're covered up so i don't have anybody to spare to film me so y'all bear with me it may be a little shaky may not be the best driving video in the world but hey we'll just you know like my uh grandpa used to say don't worry about what you don't have make do with what you got so uh, hang tight and i'll see you from the driver's seat all right everybody um i'm behind the seat driver's seat getting ready to test drive this mercedes 2015 thor citation 24 sa again probably one of the very few motorhomes that i would feel comfortable doing this that is driving and filming because these things are just so they turn so easy they're so easy to control even one-handed now i do not recommend y'all doing what i'm doing um because i'm very very experienced driver when it comes to rvs and and believe me guys if it's if i'm out in a situation where i don't feel it safe i'm cutting this camera off and dry and concentrating on driving i'm not going to take a chance of putting my life or somebody else's life in jeopardy just to film a test drive segment of a video it's never worth that so what i'm going to do is we're going to test drive one thing i like to point out on the mercedes is i don't even think i have a seat all the way back no i don't even with a seat look at all the leg room because i'm six foot four guys i'm not a little guy and i can stretch out in this thing probably more than any other motorhome that i've been in in any class i mean this thing's even with the slide out in has got incredible leg space and uh no check engine lights again dash air is cold i've got it turned down a little bit so i don't start coughing <laughs> nice and comfortable in here too of course it's i don't even think we broke 80 degrees today it's a beautiful day here in northwest georgia um and we're gonna take her up the road i guess i better put my glasses on that might help I mean, wear my glasses when i'm driving <laughs> and you know the mercedes great visibility you know the mirrors got the blind spot mirrors on the bottom i mean it's you see really well out this thing and of course we'll drive it see how it does remember these are a little bit less narrower than or a little bit less wider than your average class c so and of course we hit this red light here and again guys just a quick reminder if you're interested in this motor home our phone number is 706-965-7929 and any of my sales people can help you i'm not in sales i'm in the marketing department so uh, I, I don't sell um, usually i'm not even around my desk unless i'm editing or piecing a video together and so i uh which I know people kind of look at me funny. I'm sitting here talking, holding the camera, but it's all right. Believe me, if you look like I did, you're used to people looking at you funny anyway. <laughs> but pretty day, at least, hey, we, at least we're at first, so we can go up this hill and kind of get an idea of the power. And I know what these things can do. They've got great power. Um, I mean, I know 188 horsepower don't sound like much, but 325 pound feet of torque, that's where your hill climbing power is at, your torque, not your horsepower and i mean honestly you can set this thing next to a, a motor home with a v10 and keep up with it and probably pass it going up this hill from a dead stop now it, it'll catch up to you on the interstate but you don't need to be driving these things much over about 70 75 anyway and like i said the best fuel mileage is when you keep it around 65. yeah oh yeah i mean it's angle it'll stand it'll It'll hook and book, guys, for a motorhome. Tires feel good. I mean, I'm not getting no bad vibrations. Of course, I know I'm just running 45, but. And we'll take it up the road here in just a second up the interstate. Well, this is 50. So yeah, keeping up with traffic's not too bad.
you know, these are very comfortable on long trips. I mean, this is something I could drive eight or 10 hours, no problem. And not be so fatigued like fighting a class A or, you know, something like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love to see, I've got a 25 foot motor home. So kind of this style myself, mine's on a four chassis, but I'm telling you, there are days I would not mind having the Mercedes chassis over the Ford. I mean, don't get me wrong, they both got pros and cons, but I just, uh, I just like the way these things feel. These, to me, feel like I'm driving a minivan. That's just the way it is. Let's see what this thing will do getting on the interstate. Let's see, there he is. Uh, I mean, we're already keeping up with people towing campers, so. I mean, we're hitting 60, and I had to slow down to get over, so 65 wouldn't have been a problem on this, and we'll hit the cruise control. Uh, let's see here. You know, probably the only thing, if I really had to fault this thing, that front tires may need to be rebalanced. Hey, I'm going to tell it to you like it is, guys. I got the crew set at 65. Got a little vibration. And they may actually smooth up as they go down the road. But I'd say the very worst case, you probably need to rebalance front tires. No big deal. And I may just be being overly picky. But I'm picky when I buy, too. I mean... Half the people that drive this thing probably would, wouldn't even say a word about about any kind of little bit of vibrations in the front, you know. And believe me, I've certainly drove them long distance a lot worse than this. So, but we'll try the brakes here. Cruise control works good, by the way. And I like to try the brakes so I can feel the rotors, make sure there's no no rotor vibration like they need to be turned or got good pedal and so yeah so far everything feels great transmission shifts good that's the main thing i want to feel um you know going down the road i wasn't fighting it like it was pulling to the left or the right coming to a stop it's not pulling to the left or the right uh all the gauges look good no warning lights guys um i think um I think it's pretty good. Like I said, the only thing, the tires got a little bit of a vibration. That may just be me being too picky. Some of y'all may not be that bad. You may say, oh, that ain't nothing. You're being overly, you're just being overly picky. But, you know, whoa. Yeah. I had a wreck there. Wasn't me. But, uh. Anyway, guys, thank y'all so much for watching. Call us before coming down. Make sure it's available. 706-965-7929. And uh, appreciate each and every one of y'all. Smash us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia. Y'all have a, a safe and a great weekend. And uh, I'll see y'all uh, Monday. Hey guys, just a little postscript uh, on this video. I'm going to go ahead and get those tires balanced for you. Um, I drove it up in speed a little bit and I'm not really getting no better. So I'm going to get an appointment next week for this thing at the tire store. And this is too nice of a motorhome to have that issue. So whether they need to be replaced or they need to be rebalanced, whatever it takes, um, I'm going to get that taken care of for you. So just ignore the part about the tires I, I i promise you that's gonna be taken care of um so don't worry about that so i'm gonna put in a service ticket for that as soon as i get back to the lot but anyway guys just just wanted to mention that i, I try to take care of you so uh thanks again for watching and uh again for the last time <laughs> at least for today look forward to seeing you here in beautiful ringo georgia